Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, "'Ask me for whatever you wish.' and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. 
Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. The girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Those of you who know me well know that I am a parrot head. Now, if you don't know what a parrot head is, you'll know that they are a fan of Jimmy Buffett music, somebody who attends his concerts, buy his, buys his latest albums, all of that good stuff that a fan does. Now, part of the reason that I became a parrot head was because of my need to belong to a community and have a sense of identity when I was in college. So what happened is I was earning money for spending money as I was in college by working at Lowe's. And at that time, there was a number of us college students and a few young adults who worked at Lowe's. And because we were college students, we often worked the night shift and we worked late into the evening, except one day of the week, and that was on Sundays, because Lowe's at that time closed early on Sundays. And so the other college students and young adults and I, we would go out on Sunday nights. We would often take out my parents' boat and spend the evening skiing on Lake Kiwi. And then we would go over to our friends, Janine and Gary's house to grill out and just kick back and listen to music. And it was always Jimmy Buffett music. And at that time, we always thought Janine and Gary were the coolest of people. They were young adults who were married. And to us, they seemed like they had it all. They had a house, they had a happy marriage, they had jobs. They were just great and fun people to hang out with. Well, as I graduated from college and moved into my adult life, I had such a sense of belonging with other parrot heads and Jimmy Buffett fans that I brought that into my adult life. And so people quickly learned about my love for Jimmy Buffett music, and I began planning parties where we as a group would plan out how we would get Jimmy Buffett concert tickets, um, who would pack what to go to the concerts. We had groups up to 30 people that sometimes went to these concerts. Well, at one point after years of planning these concerts, I started to notice that some of the behavior of some of the people within the group uh, was not appropriate. And at that moment, I felt sort of convicted, like, do I really want to be planning the type of event where my friends aren't behaving as they should? And I remember the first time I thought that, I sort of shook it off and then planned a concert again for the next year. And the same thing happened again, and the same conviction arose. And so I really found myself at this place where I needed to make a decision. Was I going to continue in this community where I had my sense of belonging and had a firm identity? Or was I going to start naming what was going on um, stop planning these type of activities and really potentially lose some of the friends in the community that I had built around me. It's this type of decision that we see Herod having in today's gospel. And to really understand what's going on, you have to back up a little bit. This text is really about who is Jesus and what's Jesus' identity. Now, to get to that answer, we get this kind of side story about Herod and John the Baptist. And the reason is for that is John the Baptist, as you remember, comes on the scene repenting or proclaiming a message of repentance, telling people that they need to repent and turn around and prepare for the coming of the Lord. 
Well, well, J John the Baptist preaches this message. Really, Jesus continues it. When Jesus comes on the scene, Jesus is also calling on people to repent and turn their lives around and to really follow him, um, to follow God. And so we get at what this means for our life through this story of John the Baptist and Herod. And what we see happen in the story is we have a man, Herod, who really understands that John is a holy man. He loves listening to him. He has caught his attention. He knows John is righteous. He knows about John's message of repentance. In fact, John has told him, your marriage is not okay. And yet, Herod faces a choice. Does he follow the message of John? Or does he kind of just keep listening to John, knowing that he's a holy man, knowing that he is righteous, but not really doing anything about it, not letting it affect his life in any way? And so Herod continues in this kind of in-between place. Meanwhile, his wife is holding a grudge because John has been calling Herod to this life of repentance. And so she waits for the appropriate time, the appropriate time where she can get John out of the picture. And that time comes when Herod is hanging out with all of his peers, so to speak, his friends, his buddies, and they're having a banquet. And Herod decides to sort of show off. Herodias comes in and dances, and they're all pleased. So he decides to offer her something that he actually doesn't even have. He offers her half of his kingdom. Well, while he was a king, he didn't have a kingdom. Um, there was an empire, and there was an emperor who was in control of that empire, not the king. So the king makes a kind of empty promise to Herodias that she can have up to half the kingdom, thinking she will never ask for something that big. She's going to ask for something trivial. But this is Herodias's opportunity. And she jumps in and decides she will take advantage of this oath. And so she asks for John's head on a platter. And at this moment, Herod faces a crucial decision. And that decision is to follow the message John has been calling him to follow, to repent, to follow after God, or to make himself look good among his community, to keep this group of peers intact and fulfill what he knows is an improper request. Well, we know what Herod decides. You know, I think it's easy for us to kind of blame Herod, to look down on him for the choice that he made. But the reality is, is don't we make similar choices every day? How often do we come into church and we listen to the message of God, to Christ's salvation, to the call to turn around, that we can lead a different life, that our sense of identity and belonging doesn't have to come from outside groups, but can come from God's very self. And yet, when we hear that message, we don't like feeling uncomfortable. We don't want to be told to repent, to do something different. So we push that message to the side and decide to keep doing what we've always been doing. Now, I think the good news is about this story is that the story mainly is about John and Herod. But the story doesn't stop there because our story begins with them saying that he's trying to figure out who Jesus is. Herod once again finds himself in the same position to make a decision. And that's what God's grace is. 
That's what God does for us, is God presents us with this decision over and over and over and over again. And so we continually have these opportunities to accept God's grace and to repent, to turn around, to follow Christ, and to do those things that we know are right and to become those people that God is calling us to be.